Hi, everybody. Uh, and hello to all you outside. You out there? Yeah. Viva Mexico! So I thought, I thought we've got an inside, we've got an outside, and we need to have this collective energy combined. So an acknowledgement out there is important. Um, and thank you all for coming. Um, I've been asked to speak about art, revolution, calaveras, and death, and I've been given 12 minutes. And I'm going to try to get it all in if I can. Uh, I got interested in this, uh, this subject of uh, death as a small kid wandering uh, along the beaches in California collecting fossils. And I found these dead things fascinating. And they've stuck with me all my life. Became a geologist, paleontologist. And one day, years later, I had an opportunity to uh, get to know uh, Mexican culture. And a part of that Mexican culture was reflected in the art of Mexico through this guy, Jose Guadalupe Posada. Uh, he was born in Aguas Calientes in 1852. And he was uh, a lithographer originally, working in big stones and cutting images out of his head. Uh, this incredible transference of genius of, of imagination that somehow gets stuck onto a big stone and then finds its way onto a piece of printed paper and into people's homes or into people's businesses. And it's just amazing. Uh, to those of you who are in graphic arts or those who have, you who have read a book or architects out there where you, you take something that's an imagination and it becomes reality, this is the kind of thing that inspires us, that makes life so valuable and so interesting. And what's interesting also to me is this collaboration between Posada and, if I can have the next slide, this guy, Antonio Venegas Arroyo, who was a publisher. Now, by coincidence, they were born in the same year. Venegas Arroyo in Puebla in 1852. He moved to Mexico City and started working for this guy, this general guy named Porfirio Diaz. And he was a bookbinder, and they... they built a very nice reputation uh, together, uh, I guess, uh, in, a, in a relationship that allowed the Venegas Arroyo to really go into the printing business. And he needed a printer eventually. In 1880, he started his business. Ten years later, he needed a really top artist. And Posada was ready to move to Mexico City about that time, about 1888. And he had been working for... Uh, a lot of different printers at the time, but this relationship with Venegas Arroyo is the one that's most special. Because out of this relationship, we have this tremendous output of the Calaveras. And you can see here this energy. This guy looks like he's, he's death. He's, he's leaping, he's kicking skulls out of the way, and he's coming at you with a knife. And it's just incredible the way... Uh, it's black and white, but you can see the knife has black blood on it. You know, I mean, it's just, your imagination is there. So this is the visualization that Posada had. This is an acid etching. They used a little pencil with grease on it on a zinc plate, and then they dipped it into acid, and the relief part is where you see the black ink. So if we can have the next slide. This is one of his famous images. Uh, again, this is not signed, so we don't really know absolutely positively for sure if this is Posada or not, but... Most experts agree that it is. It's the Calavera Don Quixote. And again, you can see this incredible frenetic energy flying out. And this guy, he means business no matter what you do. And this is the big message that comes across in all of the Calaveras that Posada did, is no matter what you do, no matter who you are, no matter where you hide, you know, you can side back here. It's, death is going to find you. And here we have artists. Musicians, painters, writers, doesn't matter. But look at this. Look at the strokes, the way Posada uses the light uh, uh, of, the, of the burin, which is the little metal tool that scratches into the lead plate. And this is a lead engraving. Uh, it's the art, art, Artistas Purgatorios, <laughs> the artists in, in purgatory. One of, <laughs> si, gracias. <laughs> so... Again, image after image you see of, uh, of Posada's genius being uh, put out there through the printed uh, medium of Venegas Arroyo. Now, the really neat thing about these two guys working together was that Venegas Arroyo was a commercial genius. He knew what needed to sell. 
And so he found himself a top artist in Posada. And the two guys combined created works that sold all over Mexico, actually even into the United States. The, the Calaveras were not the only thing that they created. They did a lot of religious pieces. They did a lot of political and historical works. And in this case, we have something that came a little later. The, the, the left half side you see here is by Posada. You can see it's actually signed on the bottom. But this piece over here on the right, where you can sort of see a shadow in the middle, a little bit off center to the left, is, is a, the, the, I guess you would call it the, the guy hiding in the, in the sheet, really. It's the Cucus Clanes. But the Klansman hiding in the sheet came later. It's not by Posada. And it was done probably in the 1920s. And it was done by Antonio Venegas' son, Blas, who took over the printing business after Venegas Arroyo's death in 1917. This is something that Posada created also out of uh, a lead engraving. You can see now the festivity. Everybody's having a good time here, but no matter how good a time you have, you're still going to end up as a calavera. You're going to be dead. It's a pleasant message to always be given, especially around Dia de los Muertos, but at the same time, it reminds us of who we are. And if you look around, if you look in a mirror, if you look at each other, uh, you'll find that Beneath that skin, beneath the wonderful clothing that you have, no matter what you're wearing or not wearing, there is a calavera. And that is something very interesting. Here we have the calaveras of love, really, the cemetery of love. <laughs> and each one has a little story about somebody who lived. Here's a, a toriador here. Here's a lovely couple, very much in love, a general. No matter who you are, you end up in the same place, in El Gran Monton de Calaveras. And this is something I think that at some level Posada and Venegas Arroyo recognized that, that we are all calaveras, all skeletons underneath, and it gives us a certain common, uh, I guess, unif unifying factor. And this unifying factor allows commentary, editorial comment, and it allows us to, to really move into uh, getting past our petty grievances or petty things that we do on our day-to-day -day life and perhaps look at things like social injustice or how might life be while we're still alive before we become a calavera. Can we do something positive with each other? Uh, so it's the power of the image, also the written word, but the power of the image is very important. And uh, this social element uh, that Venegas Arroyo had communicated using a lot of what Posada had is uh, evident in the social application of the art in the years and the influence following. You have the Talagrafica Popular, you have Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, Arturo Bustos, many, many different artists who have used the Calavera to communicate messages. Uh, you'll see, if we can speed through this a little bit more, since we're on time, here's a here's a Don Chapito Marijuano. He's a, or Sir Joey Pothead. He was a, a sort of an editorial comment uh, at that time about the middle class. The kid, the kid, or Joey always said he was always smoking marijuana. His eyes are bulging out. He's got this big head. He thinks well of himself. He would get into these imaginary uh, misadventures. But it was a commentary on people who have it all made, but they don't really do anything with all the gifts that they have. It's a reminder to us of how we can go off off track a little bit. So next slide, please. Yeah, so here's the most famous one, perhaps the iconic image called La Catrina, the female equivalent of a Catrine. And a Catrine is a, a, a dandy, somebody who thinks really well of himself, but doesn't really pay much attention to the social injustices, the, the issues of the day. And here she is reminding us that no matter how much money you have, how beautiful that hat is, we all have this common destination, which is the Gran Monton de Calaveras. Next, please. So uh, Esther Hernandez in California created this image to draw attention to People working in the fields with pesticides, insecticides, dying, becoming ill, getting cancers, and so on and so forth. So, sorry, sun-made raisins, sun-mad is the actual 
uh, I guess, result. Anyway, next please. Here we have, this is a wonderful image by Arturo Bustos. Uh, it's again showing us, you want land? Well, here it is. You know, here's the land for you. And it's a grave. It's, a, it's, just, it's a very powerful image, very current. Uh, next please. Here is from the Asaro movement. These images, the, the vultures, the calavera, are right out of Posada, over a hundred years after Posada's death. Now, I will leave you with this last little bit here because I know we're short on time. The grandson of Antonio Venegas Arroyo was named Arsacio, and it's interesting that we would mention luchadors. He was a luchador. Uh, he took on the family business, the printing. He wrestled under the name Kid Venegas, you know, and uh, he wrestled for about 16 years. In the 1950s, a friend of his, a fellow wrestler, the wife of a wrestler, uh, introduced him to these three guys. And one of them was named Che Guevara, the other one was Raul, and the other one Fidel Castro. He trained them in physical conditioning prior to the grandma invasion in 1956. They lived for 18 months with the family. Arsacio not only trained them in physical conditioning, but the, fam the sisters, they hid guns. Uh, underneath uh, the house. They raised money for the Cuban Revolution. The, the printing press that, that printed these Calavera images as you just saw uh, printed up bonds which were sold in the United States to support the Cuban Revolution. So the question then becomes, from this very beginning of the Venegas Arroyo printing house and the association with Posada, the caring and the desire, the looking at the social injustices represented through the Calaveras, the imagery. Years later, these things continue to motivate us to have revolutions. We won't even get into the Mexican Revolution because that was reflected also in the work that these guys did. So it goes on, the Telegrafica Popular 1937, these images that you see of people struggling, people coping with issues of have and have not. So if I can leave you with anything, it's to listen carefully to the rest of these talks because you will find, I hope, a common message of the imagery, of the promise of a collective consciousness that seeks a higher truth and a better benefit to all of us. And it's a really nice, nice thing to look at life in the positive. There's a plenty of negative out there, but if we seek the positive and we work towards that, then it becomes something so much more valuable and something so much more worth celebrating, even on a Dia de los Muertos. Thank you very much.